Hello everyone. Welcome to Nesso Academy. In the previous lecture, we have understood references in C++. We got to know about references and you might be thinking that why I have introduced references. That too, in the middle of the discussion about functions. This is because understanding references is quite important for us to understand the concept of calling a function by reference which is the topic we will understand in this lecture. That's why in the last lecture, I have introduced you to references and now we are in this lecture and the name of this lecture is Call by Value and Call by Reference. In this lecture, we will properly understand how to call a function by value and how to call a function by reference. We will also understand the difference between the two. So, without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic of this lecture is call by value. First, we will properly understand how to call a function by value and what does it mean. Then, we will move to the next topic where we will understand call by reference using pointers. We have already understood pointers in the last lecture. We got the basics of pointers. Those basics are enough to understand call by reference using pointers. Then we will understand call by reference using references. So these are the topics. Let's start with the first one that is call by value. So what is call by value? Call by value means calling a function by value. In this type of function call, the copy of the variable's value is created and it is passed to the function. This means in call by value, first the copy of the variable's value is created for us and then we would be able to pass that copy to the parameter of the function. That's the concept. Now, if we make any changes to the parameter, then those changes will not reflect in the original variable. This is what I have mentioned here. Changes made to the parameter do not affect the original variable that we have passed as the argument. I hope this concept is clear. If somehow this concept is not clear, then I will make it clear to you with the help of an example program. Let's now understand these points properly through an example program. Here is the basic C++ program. I have included the IO stream header file because I am planning to use STDC out in the main function. Right now, we have this definition of the main function. Inside this main function, we have this statement return 0. Now, let's define one more function and let's name it change value. In this function, we have the parameter x of type integer. We can imagine this parameter as the empty box, and this empty box has the name x. This box is right now empty because we do not have any value for this parameter. Also, you can observe the return type of this function is void. Now, what does this mean? This function will not return any value as the output. It will only perform some action. That's it. That's the meaning of void as the return type. Apart from this, I want to mention this, that variable x or this parameter x is part of this function and therefore its visibility is within this function only. This means this variable has the scope of this function. It is not visible outside this function. Now let's define another variable within the main function. Let's name this variable a. Now we have an integer variable a with value 10. We can imagine this as the box with value 10 and the name of this box is a. So now we have two boxes. 
one box has the visibility within this function change value which is x and the another box a has the visibility within the main function. This variable has the value 10. Now, let's call this function by value. For this purpose, we can pass variable a as the argument to this function. Now, what does this mean? When we pass a variable as the argument to the function, it does not mean that we are passing the variable itself. We are passing the copy of the value which is stored in the variable to some other function. This is what I have mentioned as the first point. A copy of the variable's value is created first and then it is passed to the function's parameter. Here is the parameter of this function. This parameter will receive the copy of this value. So, we are sending the copy of this value to this variable. Now, this variable x will hold this value. I hope this is clear to you. We know when we call a function, the control transfers to that function. Now, we are inside this change value function. We know that parameter x has received value 10. Now, if we make any changes to this variable, then those changes will not reflect in the original variable. That is the second point. Changes made to the parameter do not affect the original variable. This is because of call by value. We have passed the copy of this value to this variable, not the variable itself. That is why changes made in this variable will not reflect in this variable. So here, if we write this statement, x equals 100, then this variable will be updated by value 100. But this change will not reflect in the variable a, which is the original variable. I hope this idea is clear to you. So this is the concept of call by value. Now we know after execution of this statement, we will get back to the caller. After this caller, let's say we have this statement, this std cout statement. With the help of this statement, I want to display the value of variable a on the screen. We will get the output as a equals 10 because of the format that we have provided here. We are getting a equals 10 because variable a has the value 10, not 100. So we learned call by value properly. Now we know this concept. But what happens when we want to change the original variable's value? Can we do that? Yes, we can do this with the help of call by reference. This is exactly what we will learn in the subsequent topics. For now, we are done with call by value. This means we are done with the first topic. Let's move to the second topic where we will understand the concept of call by reference using pointers. So what is the concept of call by reference using pointers? Call by reference using pointers means the address of the variable is passed to the pointer as the parameter. So, when we call a function by reference, we pass the address of the variable to the pointer which is defined as the parameter. That's the concept. So, we need to define the parameter as the pointer to receive the address of the original variable. Therefore, the pointer will point to the original variable. As the pointer would be able to point the original variable, it would be able to access that variable itself. And therefore, with the help of the pointer, we can make changes to the original variable. So, that's the concept. So, it is clear that through the pointer, we would be able to modify the original variable. This is what I have written. Through the parameter, the original variable can be modified. Now we know these points properly. Let's take the same example program and let's understand 
how we can incorporate call by reference in that example program. Here is the example program from the previous topic. Here we can observe we have a normal variable x. In place of this normal variable x, we now need a pointer. Here we can replace this normal variable x by the pointer variable x by specifying asterisk after int like this. Now we have x as the pointer. So now this is not a normal variable. It can hold the address of some other variable. Here I am passing a. This means I am passing the value of a. Now, we do not have to pass the value. We need to pass the address of this variable. For this purpose, we can use ampersand. We know ampersand has the capability to provide us the address of some other variable because ampersand is called the address of operator. So, here we can pass ampersand a in place of a. Now, let us assume the address of this variable is 1000. So, this address will be passed to the parameter x, which is the pointer. So, it will receive 1000 address. Now, this means x is pointing to variable a. So, what does this mean? Now, in the change value function, we have the access to the original variable a. We know this already that variable a has the visibility within this function. But now we can access this variable inside this function too. This is because of this pointer x. Now here in place of x equals 100, we need to specify asterisk x equals 100. Now why is that the case? We know with the help of asterisk, we can go inside the variable which is pointed by the pointer and we can make changes in that variable. So, asterisk x is same as a. We can write a in place of asterisk x. So, we have a equals 100. Now, with the help of this statement, we will get 100 in place of 10. So now variable A is holding 100. I hope this is clear to you. So that's the concept of call by reference. We have made changes to the original variable which is defined in some other function. And that too, we have done this from the other function. This is done with the help of the pointer. Now, we know when we execute this program, we will get the output a equals 100 because now variable a is holding value 100. So, with this, we have properly understood the concept of call by reference using pointers. In the last topic, we have understood that with the help of call by value, we would be able to pass the copy of the value which is contained within the variable to some other function. So, if you make any changes to the parameter, those changes will not reflect in the original variable. But that's not the case with call by reference. Here, we are using a pointer to make changes to the original variable. This is possible. So, when we do not want to modify the original variable, then we can use call by value. If we want to modify the original variable, that too, in some other function, we can use call by reference with the help of pointers. Now we know call by reference using pointers. This means we are done with the second topic also. Now let's understand how we can achieve the same behavior using references that we have learned in the last lecture. Call by reference using references means calling a function by reference, that too with the help of references. Here, reference to the original variable is defined as the parameter. So, we define the parameter as the reference 
and that reference is the reference to the original variable. So, if we make any changes to the reference, that is the parameter, then those changes will be affected in the original variable as well. We can understand these points with the help of the same example program we took in the last topic. Let's consider the same program and let's update it so that we can incorporate call by reference using references. Here is the example program from the last topic. Here we have the pointer x. We can replace this by the reference x. And this can be done by replacing asterisk by ampersand. Now we have reference x. Now here we do not have to pass ampersand a. We just need to pass a. This is like we have initialized x by a. This means now x is the reference to a. So it is just another name for a. This is what we have learned. Now we can use this x to access this variable a within this function. So we can imagine x as another name for a like this. A is the variable with value 10 which is defined in the main function. X is the reference which is defined in the change value function. And this is the reference to A. So this X is just another name for A. Now we can easily access this variable inside this function. Now in place of asterisk X equals 100, we need to write X equals 100. Because we can use x in place of a within this function. Now we can replace 10 by 100. This replacement is possible because of this reference x. This change is reflected here as well. Now when we execute this program, we will get the output a equals 100. And we are getting this with the help of reference x. So we can call a function by reference with the help of references. It is quite simple to understand. We can also observe the syntax is also very simple. We do not need asterisk here. We do not need to provide ampersand a. We can use simple syntax and with the help of this, we can incorporate the concept of call by reference. So with this, we have understood call by reference using references. And now we know the difference between call by reference using pointers and call by reference using references. In C++, it is better to use references, especially in these type of situations, when we want to make updations to a variable that too in some other function. So with this, we have understood call by reference using references. This means we are done with the last topic as well. And this means we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.